is quite unlikely. Well, there are just some of the scenarios. Let's speak to Zia Morale. He's a Turkey analyst, director of the think tank Centre on Religion and Global Affairs. What do you think is the most likely scenario? At the moment, it's too quick to conclude. I think a minority government could very well still be a possibility. There are multiple formations of coalition that might work. Um, but an early election within four to five days will not be profiting AKP. So I don't think the party will actually push that. But I think if we enter a coalition government or a minority government situation in a year's time, it would be like to see another national election. What underpins the way this election result went? Was it that push uh, to get more presidential powers from Erdogan? W explain this result for us. It is complex. I think there is a genuine amount of that, that in, uh, the per, um, President Erdogan's personal ambitions have become rather costly for the party itself. I think the human rights concerns over the last two years, particularly the last one year, has been part of it. But I think the question around Kurdish peace talks and AK Party's unwillingness to take them further and, and series of events from the Roboski bombings um, as well as the Kobani incident has shaken confidence among the Kurdish voters a a HKP, HDP, um, AKP, which actually is one of the main reasons why HDB was able to get more votes thus past the and threshold. And how significant? I mean, 13 uh, percent, that is more than uh, ha had been anticipated. How significant is that aspect of this result, do you think? Um, it is. I think um, if you look at, it's not just the HDP, but also the Nationalist Party, MHP, also saw an increase in votes. AKP lost a lot of representation across the country, but it still maintains a dominance with some 40 percent plus votes. So it's still in the game it will still be a powerful party for a long time to come with a solid um, constituency behind it too but I think the structure of the parliament and from now on therefore the politics and foreign policy will be altered. I'll talk about foreign policy in a moment but just in terms of domestic direction if there is this coalition with uh, the nationalists do you see fundamental shifts of, of domestic policy in terms of the direction of a future government? If it's the nationalist party in the coalitions, I think we can anticipate a, a much more difficult process waiting us with the Kurdish peace process. That would be the cost of that. Um, if it's a coalition um, with another formation between CHB and MHP and HDB, which is very unlikely, we could see more perhaps democratic reform vis-a-vis -vis electoral law and possibly a new constitution. But I think a lot of things are open-ended at the moment and things might turn out really well. But in the bigger shot, we see in the bigger picture, we see a lot of positive signs. We have more female MPs than ever before. We have four Christian MPs, one years, two years a day, and one Roma MPs. So there are a lot of positive signs as well. You mentioned foreign policy. How do you think that is going to go after a, a rather inconclusive result like this? Um, for 13 years now, AKP has pretty much enjoyed a dominant um, a government um, power, so therefore they were able to dictate foreign policy decisions and took a lot of risks. But from now on, they will face serious parliamentary and public scrutiny, and the coalition partner or any compromise they give in a minority government would automatically mean a much more cautious foreign policy. So we will see a but taming... already cautious. So, I mean, how, when you say a more cautious, what do you mean? Because... In terms of where it sits, uh, Western capitals have looked to Turkey as being a stable country and that helps with, with all of the turmoil uh, amongst its neighbours. It is, in fact. I mean, the fact that there might be a coalition government which perhaps HDP and CHP with having opposing policies on Syria question is a concern in Europe as well as in US, vis-a-vis -vis what that might mean for Turkey hosting of refugees, what that might mean um, in regard to Turkish place in, in, in forming of a Syrian opposition. But at the same time, Turkish foreign policy and interests are um, challenged beyond domestic party politics as well. So there will be a certain part of it that will still be stable. But from a democratic analysis, perspective, um, the fact that we can see a majority government with such strong mandate shaken by elections, not by street protests or leaks or a military coup, but by votes, um, is actually a really positive sign for larger Middle East as well as for European partners. You touched on it, so did Mark Lowen. and the, the, the prospects, I know you said that uh, they perhaps don't want it, uh, having won, what, 41 percent of the, uh, the poll, but the prospects realistically of uh, elections again very soon because th there simply isn't the, the stability to actually move a government forward. H how realistic do you think that is? Um, I think I, I'm not too inclined to forecast an immediate um, election on the horizon. The economic costs of this outcome has already been clear today. Um, the Turkish lira and the markets have taken a, a serious plunge. Um, and also if AKP was to recall for an election, we don't really forecast a change in its vote, so it will be actually much more risky for them. But in a year's time, if AKP can show to their voters that actually without them there is no stability and no economic um, improvement, then they might very well once again um, score higher votes, but also HDB 
um, faces serious challenges in regards to maintaining the new Turkish waters that they enjoy. So they will make it, or try to make it, work. Uh, Zimaral, thank you very much for, for coming in. Thank you. And uh, a pointer, you can find more in-depth analysis of these election results on our website, where we're also looking at the impact of the result on Turkey's economy. Just go to bbc.com news.